eight hours and six minutes. Think about all the things you could do in eight hours and six minutes. You could work just over a full shift and still have enough time to relax and check your crypto wallet, just in case you didn't have enough to cry about that day. You could work about half a shift in an Amazon warehouse and fill about 10 water bottles full of pee with no breaks. Get the hell out of here. Or you could even renew the registration on one whole vehicle at the DMV. But as you can probably tell from the title of this video, you could also fill that time with just one baseball game. Ladies Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of not only that game, but the three longest baseball games in MLB history, by both time and innings played. But just before we do that, I need some of that sweet, sweet green green because I got bills to pay, so it's gonna have to be ad time. Also, bro, stop complaining about the ads. YouTube literally has a chapters function. It's it, like, it's never been easier to just skip if you're so mad about it. It's not that hard, I promise. But also, you should definitely buy these products. Anyway, see you in a bit. Hold on there, buckaroo. It's ad time. This video is brought to you by Canadips. Now, what is Canadips? How about you shut up and let me tell you. Canadips is a great tasting, superior alternative to traditional dipping. These pouches are completely nicotine free and full of flavor. He's definitely impressed with it. Mm. That's right. Their pouches. Crafted and manufactured in Humboldt County, California, they're made in the heart of the cannabis industry. Now, how do they work? Candidips is made with 100% American-grown hemp and is combined with a water-dispersible technology that absorbs rapidly and acts fast. They use coconut fiber and other natural ingredients in their formula. No synthetic crap. I would recommend the Cali Roll, which comes with all five of the traditional flavors. Personally, I've been enjoying the Tangy Citrus. It hits a spot, brother. As someone who has and is currently using Canadips, I can assure you that it is an absolutely amazing way to intake CBD. It's smokeless, nicotineless, tobaccoless, it's everythingless. Besides the stuff you want, obviously, which is CBD and all natural ingredients. The nice thing about it too is you don't have to spit, so you can take it anywhere you are without having a spitter in your hand and looking like a freaking weirdo. If you want to try the Cali Roll, you can get 30% off the Humboldt pack loaded with all the flavors and strains that make Humboldt famous for 30% off by using code Stark at CanadipsCBD.com. That is C-A-N-N-A-D-I-P-S-C-B-D.com. Again, that is code Stark at CanadipsCBD.com to get 30% off the Cali Roll. Canadips. When it comes to dipping, don't actually dip. Just use Canadips. Man, those ads were epic. Now let's get back to it. Out of the over 200,000 games of Major League Baseball ever played since the league was created, these are the three longest games by innings and time played to ever take place. May 1st, 1920. The Brooklyn Robins versus the Boston Braves. This game went on for 26 innings, the most innings ever played in a single MLB game. Now, you may be wondering why we're starting with this one that has the most innings ever played, and that's because it only lasted about three hours and 50 minutes. I mean, yeah, that's still a pretty long time, but it's not even half of the longest. It's also the lowest scoring game out of any of them, ending with a one-to-one -one tie. A one-to-one -one tie across 26 innings should be an international war crime and a felony at the least. Like, I don't even know who to be frustrated with. So I, I guess I'll just Kyle my wall or something. Now, bear with me on this one. Brooklyn gets a run at the top of the fifth inning. The Braves get one in the bottom of the sixth inning. These are the only two runs put on the board for the next 20 innings. 20. That was it. Lots and lots of strikeouts, at least by 1920 standards. Would have been a lot more if Adam Dunn played here. Kept this game from seeing any more runs. Gonna take a wild guess and say basically everyone who didn't strike out finished their at bat with approximately 0.006 pitches each to keep this game progressing at an incredible pace for 26 torturously bad innings. Oh, and one more thing. The pitchers for both teams, Joe Esker for the Robins and Leon Kadori for the Braves, threw the entire game as well. 26 inning complete games for both teams. Don't show this to any current MLB manager either. Two players got up to bat 11 times and eight got up to bat 10. At least they didn't have to go for eight hours, so that's a 
thing, I guess. September 11th, 1974. St. Louis Cardinals versus the Mets, baby. Love the Mets. All right, baby, let's go. 25 innings. This game went on for seven hours and four minutes. The game starts with the Cardinals up to bat against Jerry Kuzman. Joe Torre hits a single with Ted Sizemore on third and Reggie Smith on first, moving him to second and bringing Sizemore home. Nothing else too crazy happens, so in the bottom half, the Mets are facing Bob Forge now. With Cleon Jones in second, John Miller- I meant to say Milner. I'm sorry. Hits a double and brings Jones home. These will be the only two scores put on the board until the bottom of the fifth when Joan hits a homer with Felix Mion on base, bringing the score to 3-1. to one. So far, seems like any other average low scoring slow game, but oh boy. I bet the 13,000 lucky fans at the stadium that day didn't expect what was coming. At the top of the ninth inning, Cardinals Ken Wrights hits a homer with Larry Hurdon on base and ties the game up 3-3. Three to three. Moving along to the bottom half, our good old buddy Al Roboski strikes out all three of the Mets batters and it's now super happy fun extra inning time and oh baby it would not be the last one of those that day this war of attrition continued with a 3-3 tie for the next 16 innings imagine being a fan thinking you're just gonna spend a few hours of your evening at a fun baseball game that ends up almost being the length of a full sleep cycle and probably had less action than having a dream about doing your taxes I mean shout out to the diehard fans that stuck it out to the end I guess speaking of which the game ends when Mets pitcher not Hank Webb tries to pick off off Bake McBride at first base. After this, a slurry of errors ensued that let McBride score at the top of the 25th. Once the Mets are up to bat, they get Brock Pemberton on first with two outs, but unfortunately, or at this point for everyone's sanity, fortunately, John Milner strikes out and finally this game is put to bed. There were in total 175 at bats in this game. That's crazy. I'm exhausted just thinking about how long this game went. Also, I just got off work and I'm just exhausted in general. May 8th, 1984, Comiskey Park, the longest MLB game ever. A day that would end up taking longer than your landlord sending someone out to fix your sink. And a stadium so ancient that the man it was named after actually dressed like this. This was the longest MLB game to ever happen as far as time. It's also tied for second place for most innings played in an MLB game. The Chicago White Sox versus the Milwaukee Brewers. It seemed like a normal game at first, but oh my god, who would have guessed? It didn't stay that way. On the first day, yes, you heard that right, this game went multiple days due to the AL's 1am curfew. They went 17 innings innings, and then it got suspended. Imagine having to play 17 full innings, and then the game gets put on pause. I would definitely cry. It was also a 0-0 zero zero game until the 6th inning. It got pretty close to being a scoring game a few times before this, but this game was a mixed bag of a lot of guys having some really bad days and a few good plays thrown in the mix. Couple walks. I wish we could see what the heart rate is right now for Penn Murphy. Might have just gone up. A couple singles, some double plays here and there, but nothing really coming up any of it as far as score goes. That is until the sixth inning when the first run is finally put up on the board. After a single, a stolen base, a walk, and one more single, the White Sox finally have a score on the score board. And then Milwaukee tied it up in the seventh. Both teams then scored two runs in the ninth, and that was it. For, for the whole night, that was it. Skipping ahead a bit, as in the second day, a lot more zeros have been put up. That is, until Brewers outfielder Ben Oglevy steps up and smashes a homer with two people on base. Finally. And then Carlton Fisk and Tom Pachurik tie it up again for the White Sox. At this point, it seems this game is going to go on just till the end of time. But finally, our savior Harold Baines smacks a walk-off homie at the bottom of the 25th. White Sox win. Finally. A hit that would go down in history, at the very least for the people who had to sit through that entire game. The winning pitcher in this game was none other than the MLB Hall of Famer Tom Seaver. Out of his whole career, it wasn't the 300 wins or the 10 straight strikeouts in one game or the three Cy Young Awards or at one point even having the greatest Hall of Fame voting performance of all time. No, no, none, none of that was... Uh, <laughs> That is trash. None of that compares to getting this W at the end of the 25 inning purgatory game. That was... That was definitely the coolest thing he ever did. Oh, also another little side bit, he also pitched eight and a third innings to pick up another win in the next game that took place the same day. Two wins in one day. What a legend. Anyways, gamers, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And if you made it all the way to the end, type long boy down in the comments. I want to see who the real ones are. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Peace.